Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. I don't have a mitre gauge that works on this saw, so I'm going to make a crosscut sled for it. The first thing to do is to make some runners for it. It's got the standard 3 quarters of an inch mitre slots, but they're a bit shallower than normal, so I'm going to make some runners out of this bit of walnut. I shave it down on the table saw until it's a really snug fit. So as I say, my existing mitre gauge fitted width-wise, but the runner was just too tall. And this is just over 6mm, so I'm going to rip some bits down off this bit of walnut to 6mm. I want them so when they sit in the slot, they're going to be slightly lower than the height of the table. So I've got them, and they fit in, but they're very snug. And that's how I want them it's much easier to take some more off than add some on. So now I can fine tune the fit by planing them down. When I'm happy with the fit I can then start work on the base of the sled. I'm going to make mine of 18mm MDF because that's what I have on hand. The thicker the base of the sled the more it's going to reduce the cut capacity but with a 12 inch saw that's not really a big issue. I'm also making quite a big sled, so the 18mm is going to help support it. I'm using the old trick of putting some pennies, or in this case 5p's, into the mitre slots. And this is just going to raise the bars up slightly, above the top of the table. I want them above the top of the table, so I can get some CA glue on, and then when I put the plywood on, it's actually going to come in contact with them. I have the runners lined up with the front of the table, and then I get the ply lined up at the front as well. This sled is going to be bigger than the table and hang over to the right more because I'm going to add an extension wing later on. I can then get some weight on and leave it to dry. In the meantime, I'm going to look at making some fences for it. So I already had this 6x2 material. I'm going to cut that down to the length of the sled. This board was slightly cupped and that's going to be no use whatsoever as a fence. So I'm going to plane down two sides. I can then get it run through the thicknesser and I get this done to both pieces and then I square up the other edge on the table saw later on. When it's dry I can get this off the saw. Now that CA glue is going to be pretty strong but I want to reinforce these joints. But first I better retrieve my life savings. I'm going to use some small 3x20mm screws but first, I'm going to drill some little pilot holes and then countersink these holes. Then I can get the screws driven in place. I can now make the first cut into the sled. So I slide it in about halfway through. I get the fence roughly put in position, then I can get a square on and mark out where the blade is going to cut through the fence. So the fence needs to be taller than the maximum cut of the blade, and as this is a 12 inch saw, that's pretty tall but I don't want the fence to be that height all the way along. So I mark out a line roughly down the centre of the board. I want when the blade cuts through to be full height and then some nice sweeping curves down to this centre line. This means that I can hold the sled at the low points and my hands will always be far away from the blade. So I can get this cut out on the bandsaw. The back fence is really just to hold the board together, but I'm going to copy it out and cut it same, just so it looks nice. Then I can give both the pieces a good sand on the spindle sander. To attach the fence, I line it up and then at the far corner I get a clamp on to hold it in place. From the underside I can pre-drill and then drive up a 60mm screw into it. It now pivots on that single screw, 
so I can get the square back on the blade and move the base of the fence up until it's touching it. I can get the clamp back on that end and then from the underside drill some more pilot holes and get some screws in. I'm not going to glue it because it might need some fine tuning in the future. And then all I've got to do is take the screws out, make some adjustments and get them back in. With the front fence on, the back one can then get screwed on. This doesn't need to be aligned at all, just needs to get attached. I can now get it back on the saw and let the blade cut slots in both of the fences. So when it cuts through that fence, the blade sticks out the back. I want to do something about that to keep it a bit safer. So I'm using this bolt again to draw out a curve. I can now get this cut out on the bandsaw. These are little pieces left over from when I cut out the fence, so I'm actually using the crosscut sled to cut them to length. I can then get these little scraps attached to this curve I've just cut out. I just get them glued and clamped on either side of this, and then this is going to help me attach it to the fence. So when the glue's dried, I can get this glued onto the back of the fence. So when the blade comes through, it's just going to come through into this and never be exposed. One last touch is to give it all a coat of Danish oil for a bit of protection. And that's it done. Before I test it out, I'm just going to wax my tabletop. This should help everything slide nicely and stop it from rusting. I'll put a link down below onto my Amazon page. I'll stick it in the finishing section because I don't know where else to put it. So you just brush this on, lots in the mitre slots and leave it to dry. Now I've made sleds before and I've put mitre tracks on them, but I find that just overcomplicates things and this screw clamp is much simpler. It really works great as a stop. I'll put a link on the tool page as well to where you can get some. As you can see the curve of the fence just naturally keeps my hands to one side. So that's it all done. Thanks for watching, thanks to my Patreons and please subscribe for more videos.